Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. So here we go with the first song, a little song entitled, Last Night I Was In The Mood, Tonight I Must Get Some Sleep. <laughs> when the nights get nice and dark, I always go in the park. I only go there for a lark, passing the time away. I hear lovers bill and coo, you'd be surprised if I told you All the naughty things they do while passing the time away The other night a loving couple caught in close to me She was just turned 21, he was 83 The rain came down, they got no gamp, they both sat down, the grass was damp He couldn't get up, he got the cramp, passing the time I know exactly, I know exactly what you're saying to yourself. You're wrong. I know what you're saying. Oh, you, you wicked lot. You're the kind of people who get me a bad name. Here's a funny thing, now this is a funny thing. I went home the other night, there's a funny thing. And I went in the back way, through the kitchen, through the dining room, the drawing room. And there's a fella standing there, not a stitch on. Can you imagine that lady? <laughs> There's your memory, girl. <laughs> he hasn't got a stitch on. I called the wife in. I said, who's this? She said, don't lose your temper, Miller. Don't go raving mad. I said, I'm only asking a fair question, who is it? She said, he's a nudist, and he's coming to use a phone. There's a clever one from the white eye. <laughs> so tonight, I'm, I'm going to do for you something entirely different. I'm going to do a monologue. A monologue tonight, entitled, What Juju Wants, Juju Must Have. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and I'm really not bothered. And I should want a little assistance from the band. So, Ivor, could you play Hearts and Flowers or Monastery Garden? Now, you have a choice, and you can pick which one you like. I won't force it on you. Any one you like, Hearts and Flowers or Monastery Garden. Now, what do you fancy? Hearts and Flowers. You fancy Hearts and Flowers? Hearts you don't fancy Monastery Garden? No. You're like me, you're too old, you can't get over the wall. That's your trouble. <laughs> Hearts and Flowers it is, then. Hearts and Flowers. That's nice. She was but a village maiden. Who's to say she was to blame? But alas, a wicked squire took away her honest name. <laughs> so she journeyed up to London, thinking to forget her shame, when another wicked squire took away her other name. Here, this is... <laughs> Have you stopped? Ivy, you, you, you finished? You've stopped with it? Yes. You finished? Yes, finished. Well, then I'll carry on without you, shall I? Okay, well. I'll carry on as though nothing had happened. Right. Like the girl who got up and walked away. <laughs> I like the girls who do. I like the girls who don't. I hate the girl who says she will, and then she says she won't. <laughs> but the girl I like the best of all, and I think you'll say I'm right, is the girl who says she never does, but she looks as though she... Here! This... <laughs> Now, when I started in this business many years ago, I started in circus. I'm not a stereotype comedian, don't think that for one moment. When I come out here, I don't know what I'm going to say, but I wouldn't say I don't care, because I do care. I do care. I started in Billy Smart Circus, Billy Smart. Not the Billy Smart who is today, his father, because I'm much older than Billy. And I remember his father said to me one day, he said, Maxie, would you like to be a lion tamer? I said, I've no desire. He said, there's money in it. I said, what do I have to do? He said, all you've got to do is to walk in the lion's cage and put your head in its mouth. I said, I should think so. He said, are you scared? I said, I'm not scared, I'm just careful. He said, I shouldn't be scared of that lion, he said. That lion's as tame as a kitten, was brought up on milk. I said, so was I, but eat meat. <laughs> so he advertised for a lion tamer, and a beautiful blonde came along, like they are today, you've seen them, well out in front, a lovely roll desk. <laughs> And that's a lot of Madame Law. That's the ironing board stuck up there. 
So he said to this blonde, will you go into the cage? Said, I'll go in because I'm a lion tamer. And she walked into the cage. And as she walked into the cage, the lion made a dash for her. And she thought quick, undid a zip, and all her clothes fell off. And she stood there, she came to the world. And the lion, he stopped. <laughs> Then he started to walk towards her. And when he got near enough, he started to kiss her. And he kissed her all over. And the governor said, would you do that? I said, yes, get the lion out. <laughs> now there's a soldier, a soldier standing in the dock. The judges at the back, the jury over there. The defending counsel down here. The judge said, the soldiers, this is a very serious case. We should have to hold this in camera. And the soldier said, what does that mean? And the judge said, it won't make any difference to you. The jury, they know what it means. Defending counsel, he knows what it means. And I know what it means. Clear the court. And he said, the soldier, tell me exactly what happened. So the soldier said, well, he said, I, I met this girl, he said, and uh, she asked me to see her home. She told me she lived out in the country. Well, I took her the short way across the field. <laughs> And when I got in the centre field, I don't know what came over me, but I got hold of her. No rough stuff, no, no rough stuff. That came later, see. <laughs> and I started to kiss her and she passed out. She passed right out. And then after that, it was all la-dee-da-dee-da. -da. <laughs> and the judge said, all what? The soul said, all la-dee-da-dee-da. -da. And the judge said, what does that mean? The soul said, well, the jury, they know what it means. <laughs> And the defending counsel, he knows what it means. And if you'd have been there with your camera, you'd have known. <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Now, my recording company asked me to do a song like my old mum. And you know my old mum was a great seller and a very good song. Probably lasts for years. I haven't finished with it. But I've written one. And it's called Be Sincere, a beautiful song and beautifully sung. Be sincere in everything you do. Be sincere is all I ask of you. If you make a promise, just try to see it through. For if you break a promise, a heart is broken too. Be sincere, and as through life you go, there's one golden rule I know. Do the same to others as you would have them do, and the world will be sincere with you. Just try to see it through For if you break a promise A heart is broken too Be sincere And as through life you go There's one golden rule I know same to others as you would have them do and the world will be sincere with you
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You see, it doesn't take a lot to bring me back. <laughs> now, keep bobbing in and out, they don't get any more money. <laughs> you tire yourself out. He's a boy, isn't he, eh? I hope so. <laughs> well, how can you tell? You can't tell. You can't tell. You can change overnight. <laughs> That's nice, Maxie. That is nice. I like that, Maxie. Oh, Maxie. That's down, is it, Ira? That one's down. Must be the cold weather. <laughs> well, there's the first song, the song entitled The Girls Who Do. <laughs> shall I start it off, Ivor? Shall I start it off? Yes, you I'll start it off, and you'll creep in, won't you? I'll creep in. You'll creep in. You'll creep in. <laughs> I'll give you the key. No, well, he might be home before me, see? <laughs> I never fall in love with the first girl that I meet. I like to find out first if she lives down my street. I play the waiting game on that you may depend to find the girl I'm looking for or get her. In the end, I don't like a girl too short, I don't like a girl too tall, as long as she's a sport, for me she's bound to fall. I don't like a girl with brains, I much prefer the dunce, who will stop me and buy one, she'd like to try one, and I'll try anything one. Here! <laughs> the girls who paint their cheeks just like a rose they may look what they ain't with powder on their nose they're painting their toenails the thing that makes me vex is the way they're dressing they've got me guessing i wonder what they're gonna paint now. yeah you got <laughs> Like a girl a bit stuck up and brags a lot and says that she's got it what the others haven't got they all look alike to me i'm meeting her tonight if she's got that what she thinks is it then i think i'll be all here <laughs> There's a lady got opera glasses on me. <laughs> she thinks I'm a racehorse. <laughs> there's a fella, there's a fella won 75,000 pounds in the pool, 75,000 pounds. And his father said, son, what are you gonna do with all that money? He said, dad, I'm gonna give you a pound to start with. <laughs> his father said, a pound? He said, a you lousy, a pound? <laughs> So what are you going to do with the rest of them? I'm going to get married, go all around the world, then come back and settle down. He said, Dad, what are you going to do with your pound? He looked straight at the boy, looked him right in the eyes, and he said, Son, I'm going to marry your mother. I've had a request tonight for a story, I've had a request tonight for a story, and I think it must be a honeymoon couple because he wants me to tell her. <laughs> and I don't think the story's got anything to do with a honeymoon at all. Well, loosely perhaps, loosely, like, what's my line or find the link? <laughs> it's a little girl, she keeps biting her nails, and I said, stop biting your nails because you know what happened to you? She said, what happened to me? She said, do you want to half get fat if you bite your nails? She said, well, I won't bite them anymore, mum. 
My mother took a shopping, got on a bus, and there's a fellow sitting in the corner of the bus weighing about 20 stone. And she said, Mum, I'll get like that. Well, I, she said, you'll get worse than that if you bite your nails. She said, well, I won't bite them anymore. And after shopping, they got on another bus. And there's a blonde sitting in the corner. She's carrying a bit of weight as well. <laughs> That's what I like about you. You're so quick. You're quick. <laughs> And the kitty kept looking at the blonde, the blonde kept looking at the kitty. And the blonde, she couldn't stand it any longer, so she said to the kitty, Do you know me? And the kitty said, No, but I know what you've been doing. Last time I was here, I sang for you a song. As you know, the songs I sing, I do write myself, and you can only hear them when I sing them. Nobody else dares sing them. I sang a song called Annie and Fanny. Do you remember? Do you remember it, don't you? Well, I'm not going to sing it tonight. I'm writing another one now, a sequel to Annie and Fanny, and it's called, it's called A Fan Dancer Minus a Fan. <laughs> That's right, without, see? <laughs> a fan dancer minus a fan. I haven't finished it yet, I haven't finished it, I'm working on it now. <laughs> I've got the beginning, I've got the beginning, and I've got a part at the end, but what I'm after is that middle bit, that's what I want. <laughs> I'll give you a rough idea what it's all about. I'm not going to give you a lot. You're not going to have a lot, because I've won it when I come back, you see. <laughs> I started courting a smashing fan dancer To marry her, that was my plan Now it's all off with the smashing fan dancer She fell down and damaged her fan Here! <laughs> I want it to flow like that all the time. Keep moving all the time. It's a middle bit. That's what I'm after, the middle bit. <laughs> I should get it. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Might come to me about four o'clock in the morning. You don't know. <laughs> well, that's when I get inspiration. That's when I write all my stuff, you see. If it does, I should be out of bed quick, you know. <laughs> oh, write it down. Yes, write it down. Then, then, then the finish will be something like this. I'm not quite sure. It'll be something like this. Alas, that poor girl, she's gone home to her mother till her fan is mended or she gets another. You know? <laughs> and then you all come in, you all come in with, Oh dear, what can the matter be? <laughs> It'll be all right when I finish it, won't it? I haven't got it finished yet. <laughs> now, there's a little song, ladies and gentlemen, all about Russia. This is the finishing song, all about Russia. And before I sing the song, I feel I should tell you something about it, otherwise you won't know what it's all about. Because in Russia, many years ago they did, and I think they do now, I think so. <laughs> they did everything on the five-year plan. Made no difference what it was, yes, they got married on the five-year plan, they made love on the five-year plan, everything was on the five-year plan. And I told my girlfriend about it, and I'll tell you about it in song form, the five-year plan. Mary Ann, Mary Ann, let us get together on the five-year plan. We'll both go off to business, every morning will be fine. I'll bring my wages home and you can put your bit to mine. <laughs> Go on, make something of that. Go on, make something of it. <laughs> filthy lot, <luck>, filthy. <laughs> you say you cannot sleep at night. Your bed is no temptation. Say the word and marry me and I'll be your salvation. I'll take your horlicks up to bed and stop your night starvation. <laughs> Yes, where are you going? Where are you going? This is it. Don't touch them off the wall, yeah? Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Get your foot in! Get your foot in! Mary Ann, we're both... 
wants me as loving as we can The coffee beans each morning for your breakfast I will grind up Before I go to bed or bolt the door the clock I'll wind up And that will give you tons of time for you to make your mind up Wouldn't it be like 